Assalamu alaikum dear students uh, welcome to a uh, 10 pm technology course uh, lecture number 6 uh, in this section so we will continue the discussions with the volume technology uh, we will discuss some of the general principles of the uh, vacuum pump and then in particularly we will discuss uh, about the uh, vacuum um, the most frequently used vacuum pump that we call uh, the rotary pump so let's proceed toward the lecture uh, a vacuum pumps uh, may be operated uh, by, I mean, these are some of the general principles of different type of the vacuum pump. So, uh, normally a vacuum pump may be operated by uh, capturing, compressing and expelling the gas molecule uh, that we call positive displacement pump. And a good example uh, of this kind of pump is basically the mechanical pump. The second principles, working principles of the vacuum pump is uh, we have uh, the gas, uh, uh, we have the vacuum pump that is uh, basically operating uh, by giving the gas molecules uh, pre uh, preparational directions uh, that is momentum transfer form. And the example of these kind of pump is uh, diffusion form, uh, turbo molecular form, and aspiration form. I mean, these are the pumps. Uh, that basically work on the momentum transfer uh, uh, principle. Uh, the third category is, uh, that is based on the uh, working principle is, uh, uh, is basically operated by capturing and keeping the gas molecules. Uh, that is uh, adsorption, adsorption form, ad adsorption form, uh, reaction form. And uh, the, the practical example of these kind of forms uh, include uh, cryoform, sorption forms, iron form, evaporative gather form, uh, adsorption form, and gather form. So these are the categories of the different kind of the vacuum pump uh, depend upon uh, different operating uh, principles. So uh, you know that uh, we have different kind of forms like we mentioned on the previous slide. We have mechanical pump, we have diffusion form, we have cryoform and we have turbo molecular form uh, so all these form they have uh, different operation uh, operation ranges of the uh, i mean so different operation ranges are with their operate so uh, let's see uh, what kind of pump operates and uh, uh, which operation range of the vacuum so at first uh, we have uh, a mechanical form uh, in mechanical form uh, it basically operates uh, from atmospheric to 10 raised to a power minus 2 tor. I mean that is the vacuum uh, I mean which the uh, mechanical pump is capable of being producing. Uh, then we have a uh, sorption form or uh, that we also call it sorption form. Uh, it has the operation range uh, which uh, uh, include uh, atmospheric to three, uh, 10 raised to a power minus 3 tor. I mean the operation range of uh, Darshan form is from atmospheric to 10 raised to power minus 3 tor. Uh, then we have a uh, molecular drag pump, and the operation range of this pump is from 1 to uh, 10 raised to power minus 2 tor. Turbo molecular pump, just like you can see it here, this is the picture of a turbo molecular pump, and it has uh, the operation range of uh, 10 raised to power minus 2 to 10 raised to power minus uh, 8 tor. Then we have diffusion form. Uh, diffusion form has the operation range from 10 raised to power minus 3 to 10 raised to power minus 7 tor. And uh, last but not the least, uh, we have cryo pump uh, that has the operation range from 10 raised to power minus 3 to 10 raised to power minus 8 uh, tor. Be remember there are so many other type of pumps, uh, but due to uh, the restriction course restriction, we cannot describe. Uh, we cannot discuss about all of them. We have just uh, given uh, you uh, uh, an example of those which are being frequently uh, used uh, uh, while uh, you are working in the field of thin film depositions. So these are the most frequently used pump, especially when you you are trying to deposit a thin film via CVD or PVD. So uh, you will most uh, probably uh, encounter uh, with the use of these kind of the upon this why we are discussing about uh, these kind of form and we remember that we will discuss all of them one by one uh, in the coming slide so let's first come as we mentioned 
that we will discuss uh, I mean different kind of pump one by one so let's first come towards the rotary uh, vacuum pump just like you can see it here it's uh, I mean it's, uh, uh, the man in the picture that how you can see how the rotary pump and bulb and this is the internal sections I mean that's how this pump looks from uh, uh, from the internal and this is uh, we have classified I mean just for your understanding we have classified it and different sections so a rotary vent form is an oil seal or uh, uh, displacement form uh, the pumping system consists of uh, a housing uh, I mean here you can see that this is uh, this is the housing these all section uh, and that you can see it in a black uh, that we call the housing uh, I mean this is this is the uh, outer part of the uh, uh, vacuum pump uh, then we have uh, a, an eccentric installed uh, rotor. I mean, this is the uh, rotor. In, uh, I mean, this is the uh, the rotor. Like you can see it here, the circular form. Uh, this is the rotor. It is eccentric, eccentrically uh, installed rotor. Uh, eccentrically installed uh, rotor. And uh, then we have when it number third. Uh, this part, I mean the blade uh, shape, uh, this blade like shape, uh, it has uh, a spring inside, I mean it's the metal uh, that, that we call vents that move readily, uh, readily under the spring force uh, and we call that as a vein and it's basically uh, utilized for pushing the uh, air particle from inlet to uh, the outlet. And uh, Number four uh, sections, uh, just like you can see it here, uh, these are basically uh, the inlet. This is for the entrance of the gas molecule. I mean, it is the inlet where which it can suck the gas molecule from uh, the system. And this is the outlet that we also call the exhaust, where the gas molecule is uh, pushed outside. And then we have uh, the, the outlet wall is sealed. Uh, I mean this outlet wall it's been uh, sealed until unless we have sufficient pressure inside so when the pressure increases so it's been pushed outward and the gas molecule they are being exhausted to the uh, outside world or to the uh, surrounding so basically the outlet wall is oil seed the inlet wall is designed as the vacuum safety wall that is always open during the operations I mean here you can see it is always open uh, during the uh, operations uh, the working chamber uh, and this is this is the working chamber I mean that we denoted by number five uh, this is basically uh, the working chamber and is uh, it's located inside the hosing I mean uh, you can see it here this is this part in black this is the hosing and this is what this is the working chamber I mean inside the hosing we have uh, the working chamber so as the rotors turn, uh, I mean this is the uh, the rotor. This is the rotor. So as the rotor uh, turns, gas molecule flows into uh, the enlarged section chamber until it is sealed up by the second vent. I mean uh, here you can see that uh, when the rotor turns in, so the gas molecule they are sucking inside under it's being pushed by uh, by the wind so again let me explain as the rotor turns gas uh, gas molecules flow uh, into the enlarged suction chamber until it is sealed up by uh, the second uh, by the second wind uh, the the enclosed gas is compressed i mean here it's been uh, compressed so after that what happened the outlet wall is open against the atmospheric pressure. This is the output wall. Uh, it's open against the atmospheric pressure. Uh, in the case of gas blast operations, a hole to the uh, to the outside is open, uh, which empties into the, uh, the seal section uh, chamber on the front side. Uh, the rotor basically uh, moves uh, with the help of a motor attached to it. I mean, uh, this is the, uh, the the rotor, and it's basically a press. Uh, with the help of a motor attached uh, to it from uh, the outside. 
So this is some uh, somehow a very a short description of different uh, part, uh, different part of the rotary uh, when form. So be remember that uh, the rotary when forms uh, come basically in two types. That is uh, single stage and uh, double stage. I mean this is uh, uh, an example of the single stage uh, rotary form, and this one is uh, basically the example of the. Uh, uh, double uh, stage uh, rotary form that we also call uh, a compound form. So in the compound form, it has been designed uh, for the high vacuum. Uh, I mean, it's designed in a two stage. Uh, the compound form is designed in a two stage, uh, unlike the uh, single stage form, uh, where we have a simplified drawing uh, for a single stage uh, oil sealed rotary when uh, mechanical form. And uh, this is basically uh, the two stages form that we also call compound form. Uh, and we remember this is the same time of the uh, rotary form. So in the compound uh, design, the high vacuum side of the form uh, that we label uh, as one is operated at a lower pressures uh, due to the lack of exposure to uh, high partial pressure of oxygen uh, in that particular stage. I mean here this one we are talking about are uh, these particular sections so it should be noted that uh, supply of very little or no oil to the first stage of the compound form uh, so what is the reason for that the reason for that is to uh, achieve a one a lower pressure uh, that normally the the form can so in practice it's lead to uh, several difficulties and the reliable operations of the uh, compound form so the, the, the oil and oil seal form serves three important functions. Uh, number first, uh, it uh, provides a vacuum seal at the form exhaust. I mean, this is the form exhaust. This is the first uh, functions. And number second, uh, as a lubricants. And number third, as provide cooling for uh, the form. So how to understand, I mean, the operations uh, of the rotary form or uh, what can be the drawback of the rotary form? So here you can see that we have uh, different uh, diagrams for in order to uh, easily understand the, the operations of the uh, rotary forms. And then we have some of the working principles. That is, uh, I mean, what are the basic conditions uh, uh, under which the rotary form is operated? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of the rotary form? So here you can see that basically we have four uh, stages, I mean stage first, second, third and fourth. So what actually happened in the stage first, uh, stage first is basically the inlet exposed. Here this we have the inlet and we remember we, we, we discussed in the last slide that this inlet is always open. So it's the part where uh, the gas particle is being sucked from the, uh, from the chamber. I mean this is open toward the gas chamber. Uh, and it sucks the gas molecule. I mean, uh, we have this wall. Uh, uh, this is also called the anvit wall. It is exposed to the chamber. Uh, and with the help of this part, the gas molecules uh, is entered through the vacuum. Then we have a trap volume. I mean, uh, 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 just like we discussed, uh, the rotor move. So when the rotor moves, so the van uh, is almost blocked the sections. So the gas molecules, they are being pushed uh, toward the axis. So, uh, what we have next and uh, number third, uh, I mean, uh, as the rotor move uh, along with that, the wind move, so the gas molecules, they are being uh, compressed uh, until unless we have sufficient pressure, atmospheric pressure built on the uh, oil seal wall. Uh, so, uh, at number four, we say that uh, when sufficient atmospheric pressure is being built here, so the exhaust wall is open and uh, the gas molecule or the particle they are being uh, pushed outside uh, from the chamber. I mean all these uh, sections, I mean these four sections they are being here are given in full details. I mean here we have uh, this journal portions uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we have uh, I mean uh, further detail section 5, uh, 6, 7 and 8. So uh, we should also note uh, how the, the gas discharge wall opens and 
uh, close on each cycle. I mean, this is the fact we should uh, we should remember that how the stars will open and close on each cycles. So, uh, belt driven rotary when formed are typically upright. Uh, about 400 to 600 revolution per minute. I mean, uh, the rotor uh, that we have here, I mean, this is the rotor just like uh, we discussed it on the previous slide. Uh, it has uh, a rotation speed uh, that is equal to 400 to 600 uh, revolution per minute. While the direct driven model uh, spin at uh, 1500 to uh, 1725 revolution per minute. So, most failure and the rotary vein form can be attributed to the poor oil maintenance. I mean, one of the main drawbacks since uh, the vacuum pump, uh, that is the van rotary form, it utilizes the oil. So, uh, the maintenance of that oil, I mean, the poor maintenance of the uh, oil can be attributed as one of the main uh, drawbacks of. Uh, the rotary farm. Or Hanlon uh, stated that 95% of all the mechanical forms problem can be resolved by uh, flushing the the form and changing the oil. I mean, uh, in order to avoid the drawback, the main drawback is that uh, that we should have such a system uh, which can uh, I mean frequently uh, flushing uh, the form oil or which can frequently change uh, the the oil that has been utilized. Uh, that has been utilized inside the form. So because of the close, uh, because of the close uh, tolerance between the the rotor veins and the stator, and the stator, uh, solid particles matters entering the form is likely to cause uh, a scoring of the vacuum sealing surface, uh, which might be resulted uh, in the decrease in pumping performance. So this is another drawback uh, of the vacuum form. So for these reasons, uh, precautions should be taken to minimize uh, the intakes of the particles. So several manufacturers uh, produce small uh, screens and filters that fit on the analyte of the form to accomplish uh, this. So uh, uh, I mean these are these are some of the advantages. I mean the working speeds and uh, the disadvantages. Uh, but be remember that we also have uh, solutions from. Uh, some of the well-known books for the vacuum science uh, i mean they, they have also suggested some of the uh, i mean the solutions for the drawback that we have for uh, the rotary form so the the sample problems uh, that one might uh, have with the rotary form or one may ask uh, it is that what is the principle by which positive displacement form operate i mean these are some of the questions which normally one have in mind and second is if a mechanical form achieves uh, a best operation of 30 millitar, so uh, what is the compression ratio of the form? And number third, one may have the questions, uh, what are the three functions of the oil and a mechanical vacuum form? Uh, so all these questions we also put to you. So be remember, uh, you have to study the book. We, we are going to have uh, a reference of the articles, a vacuum and accelerator, etc. Either one of the good lectures is also available at uh, maybe at the uh, uh, at the YouTube. Uh, but along with that, we also gave it some uh, book suggestion at the start of the, uh, the course. So you may also consult the book. So that's all we have for uh, the rotary form. In next sections, we will come uh, with further discussions with, with more vacuum form. So till then, bye bye.